Team 17 have published a number of certified bangers over their 30 years of work, from Narita Boy to Thymesia to Blasphemous to Hell Let Loose, or even their most rage-inducing game ever. What the f do you mean that's not gone in? I'm so f close. Oh, that's absolute f bull, man. What the f? However, what these games do have in common, well, maybe not this one, is that they are action packed and a lot of fun. And the game we're playing today is no different. Trepang Squared, Trepang 2, 2 Trepang for all you scientists out there, whatever it is, we'll just be calling it Trepang. Developed by the amazing Trepang Studios, in this game you play as Subject 106, working for an organisation known as the Syndicate. Subject 106 is blessed with the powers of invisibility and focus, which will allow you to slow down time, and we'll be using these skills to unlock the unbreakable will achievement for beating the game and all side missions on Rage Mode difficulty, which even comes with its own warning. Let's get into it. Mission 1 starts off with us being rescued from the captivity of an evil organisation named Horizon by a mysterious figure. Like many other games, the first mission is used as a tutorial to the main mechanics of the game, like imploding enemies and... Wait, no, that's the wrong script. Everyone check out my Sniper Elite video, by the way. Ah, here we go. Let's try that again. Like many other games, the first mission is used as a tutorial for crouching, moving through vents, and using obstacles to stay hidden. Saw something over there. No, you didn't. Oh my god. I cannot run. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> Once we've completed our tutorial on movement, we pick up our first weapon and get into some action. We manage to get through the first enemy without too much trouble. just ripped his head off. But we very quickly learn that this game has no remorse when it comes to finishing you quicker than a fat kid finishes a bar of chocolate. <laughs> In my defence, I thought, I, I, I didn't think that they were going to all simultaneously turn around and shoot me. Making our way through the mission, we locate the mysterious figure that saved us earlier. Looking pretty damn oh, dead. Little medallion. We eventually make our way to the loading dock, where we encounter the largest group of enemies yet, and in all honesty, I did not want to fight that, so we ran straight for the elevator. Well. Oh no, we almost had that guy. Oh, right, okay, I think I have to take them out. I can't just make a run for the elevator. While sprinting to the objective didn't quite do it, we did discover that adopting the powers of Violet from The Incredibles, except instead of using our mind to block bullets, we used this guy's lifeless corpse, was incredibly useful. And after a few attempts, we made it to the elevator. Come on, let's go, baby. Once we're off the elevator, we fight off some enemies and make our way to the basement where we encounter local youths that the Horizon Corporation have kept captive, as well as some tougher enemies. These don't turn out to be much of an issue, as we manage to use our focus and invisibility to take them out within a few attempts. Let's go, get wrecked. That's a big room chat. I don't know how I feel about that. And my suspicions were correct. This is the final room of the mission and it's where the game really ups the ante. In this room, you have four separate waves of enemies that come on you, come after you. Fortunately, there is an autosave between each one. We do die a few times here, but we managed to get through all the waves and to the level's boss, who was extremely easy. Him and all of his reinforcements funnel through a single door like lambs to the slaughter. We just throw a grenade and he blows up. With him out of the way, that's mission one complete. Mission two takes us into an end of life care facility in Canada. And contrary to popular belief, they were not a very welcoming country, eh? 
Our job here is to infiltrate the facility and find an undercover agent, Dr. Emerson. As this facility is more heavily defended than Area 51 on the 20th of September 2019. Also, can we just appreciate this? This is something people actually did. Like, people went to a military base and just Naruto ran. We take out the guards and this anti-air turret that they just have and break into the facility. Once inside, we encounter a number of enemies split across four different rooms. The issue here being that our focus will not last long enough to get through each of the rooms to take out all of the enemies. Because of this, we do die a few times, but we put in the work and with drive, power, staying hungry and devouring, we eventually manage to take them all out and move into the next room. In this next area, we pick up the DMR, which is easily the worst weapon in the game, at least on rage mode difficulty, as it implies that you can see the enemy, but they cannot see you, which I can promise you is impossible. Who has seen me? There's literally no one up there. Oh, that guy. With the DMR removed from our inventory and placed in the bin quicker than moldy cheese, we get back to the close quarters combat that we know and love. Oh, you got absolutely wrecked. We make our way through the rest of this area and onwards towards the courtyard. Now, throughout this mission, we had died a few times, as expected when you're playing through a difficulty named Rage Mode. However, nothing quite prepared me for the courtyard. Invisible. Running, 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 running. Slide. Watch your in my defense, I didn't know that the one guy that has full body armor was going to be stood right at the end of the corridor. There's two things I can improve on there. First of all, I'm absolutely shit. And second thing, get a life. I might be the worst player in the world. What's the point of invisibility? I'm trash. Oh, that's the wrong guy again. Ah! It's hit the tip of his penis. <laughs> Oh no! If you have any superpower, what would it be? Because these guys can see through walls. Oh, your mom's a hoe! We're cooking. I don't know what we're cooking. We're probably burning scrambled eggs at this point. Let's go! Come on! Much to my dismay, this isn't even the end of the mission yet. We break further into the Horizon facility and receive information that Dr. Emerson is in the basement of the facility. However, looking at the basement, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Dr. Emerson is not in a good condition. Making our way through the basement, we're introduced to a rip-off of the seaweed monster from a pup named Scooby-Doo. And my god, this show looks absolutely awful, but whatever it is, it can't be worse than this. With them taken out, we encounter our first boss battle of the game. The Mothman has pushed us down an elevator shaft, and now it's a race against time to get out of this toxic wasteland, where we are constantly taking damage. If you know the pathway here, it's no trouble whatsoever. Going in blind, however, I did not know the pathway. I can't, I can't go through that. Oh my Christ alive! Jesus! After a few attempts, we find the right way and make our way to Dr. Emerson. And who would have guessed he's dead? Dr. Emerson, he's dead. Who'd have thought? What a waste of my time. Brilliant. With Dr. Emerson located, our next objective is to destroy the facility in order to kill the Mothman. This is extraordinarily easy. We just throw some infected people into a reactor and leave. Oh my god, no. Come on. Right, okay, let's try that again. To kill the Mothman, we hurl explosives at him and shoot his guts out with a shotgun. Let's go. Mission three requires us to either capture or kill a Horizon scientist named Dr. Kramer from a cult in Yorkshire, England. Just for reference, here is a picture of Yorkshire. You'll notice the distinct lack of snow. 
And this is a nice photo as well. It would be awful if I described it as a run-down, crime-infested, flooded crap hole. Oh, um, that, that's that's not Yorkshire. That's my channel. Uh, actually, maybe whilst we're here, you, sh you should subscribe. Maybe check out the other videos. You know, may maybe like a couple of them. We make our way through the castle and come across our first cult members, and much to my surprise, these enemies wear no armour whatsoever. So we manage to take them out with no trouble at all. And this seems to be a running theme for the whole mission. They attack us in hordes, but with no armour, we easily get past them. I mean, sure, we pick up the typical death here or there, but nothing too troubling. That is, of course, until we get to the Enforcer. Ah, the Enforcer. The Enforcer is the toughest boss battle we've taken on thus far, and boy oh boy does it show. He's fully covered in armour, meaning any shots we do hit deal minimal damage, no matter where on the body. The surrounding areas you can use as a shield deteriorate faster than my mental state when I have to go to work. And he has a minigun, which cuts through you as if he's the Yorkshire Ripper. D do you get it? It's because the mission is, is set in Yorkshire. We tried many ways of taking this guy down, from frag grenades to incendiary grenades, shotgun blasts to the face, assault rifle bullets to the face, and it, it's safe to say I didn't think this guy was ever going to be taken down, and that showed. I can see why this mission's been so easy so far, it's because they're about to bend you over and f*** you whilst you're trying to kill this guy. <laughs> it's not even like tickled his nutsack that a frag grenade is hitting, but that all changed on attempt 48 of this boss battle. <gasps> That's right people, the DMR that we threw away only a mission ago was here to save us, as if it was handed to us by God himself smiting down the Enforcer. Sure, he's only half dead, and we died instantly, but that little save symbol on the screen means that I've accomplished something with the past 45 minutes of my life, and that made this blow just a little bit softer. From that point, we only had to take out the normal cult members, and when the Enforcer returned, he had no armour, so it was nice and easy. Come on, we've almost got him. On. With the Enforcer down, Horizon send in some forces to retrieve Dr. Kramer, who, instead of killing us, just kill the cultists, so we managed to sneak on through to a second boss battle, this time against Chunk from the Goonies. And he does appear to have the same IQ as Chunk, as he manages to get stuck and we just pepper him with bullets for the kill. Yes, baby! With that out of the way, the final objective of the mission is to take down the Patriarch, the leader of the cultist group. But to be honest, when I found out the Patriarch wasn't a horse, I lost interest anyway. I'm just Fortunately, most of this boss was surprisingly easy. Thanks to the plethora of weapons given to you and the two free autosaves, we had a good way to deal damage and never really had much consequence from dying. That was until stage three. You're joking. Not another one? As if that's a skill they have. Excuse me? He's literally just elastigirled my ass, fingered me, and then pulled me back to him so he can absolutely wreck my face. What have I just witnessed? <gasps> After a few questionable deaths, we do get this run. That would have been it. Walk out the door, you see someone that you know, and they ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Once I'd emotionally recovered from that turmoil, we take the Patriarch down, which brings an end to mission three. Come on! Let's go! And it's at this point we take on what we named in the stream the side mission skirmish, where we take on every side mission back to back because there are some awful games out there that don't let you do the side missions after a certain point in the story. 
The side missions for this game provide no addition to the story whatsoever, besides the fact that they're against Horizon, I guess, so we're just going to rinse over these. Side mission 1 takes us to Arkansas, and unlike mission 3, this looks exactly how I would expect Arkansas to look. Contrary to what this guy says, some energy gets created and we immediately destroy it, so f*** you Albert Einstein. We then fight an enemy named the Scarecrow, who's appropriately named as he stands in a field as we launch explosives at him. 40 minutes, 20 deaths. <laughs> Side mission 2. Enemies attack you in waves, and you just have to take them all out. We sat in this corner. 1 hour, 40 minutes, 74 deaths. Side mission 3. We have to hack computers whilst waves of enemies attack us, and we died a few times to begin with. Until I learned that if you don't finish the waves of enemies, they don't respawn, so we just don't kill them. We just need to avoid confrontation and take out the hackers. What invigorating gameplay. 2 hours, 86 deaths. Side mission 4. Once again, hack computers with waves of enemies. We used our new method of just not killing anyone, and yeah, 10 minutes, 1 death. The method works. Side mission 5. Worst side mission by far. We had to investigate a plane crash site. There were airstrikes, some of which would kill you and some of which wouldn't, despite the fact that you're stood in exactly the same place. There we go. Once you did survive those, there were heat-seeking missiles that would kill you, even though the enemy didn't know where you were. 2 hours, 45 minutes, 103 deaths. Side mission 6. Very similar to missions 3 and 4 with the hacking, but the developers decided to add a little bit of thrice for the UFO for some reason. 20 minutes, 14 deaths. And that's all of the side missions complete. Eat my ass, dead space. Getting back into the main storyline, Mission 4 takes us to Russia, where the Horizon Corporation have turned a Soviet military base into a research facility. Getting into the facility, we find, well, nothing. No enemies at all. And we later discover that's because all of them have been teleported across the globe by what are essentially ghosts. These ghosts are blind and can only hear you if you're running. And this quickly turns my nice action shooter game into a stealth horror game. That's fine. <gasps> what the? I didn't sign up for that. Excuse me? As this is now apparently a stealth mission, we crouch our way through the whole thing and encounter very little trouble because of it. There are a few Horizon researchers and we get teleported every now and then, but we eventually make it to the boss of the mission, Subject 83. Oh no, my team! Okay, that's just not very nice. My whole team have been imploded. Great. Subject 83 is a very unorthodox boss, as we don't deal damage to it in the traditional sense. Instead, we need to go around the map and pull these circuit breakers, which are blocked by ghosts. And then to get the ghosts to move, you need to take out enemies. But for some reason, the spawn locations of the enemies don't change. So once we die once to each one, we just rush the spawn location and take out the enemies. With the enemies down, the ghosts move, we pull the circuit breakers and shoot this laser, which damages and destroys Subject 83, bringing an end to Mission 4. Here we are, Mission 5, the final mission of the game and our final objective, to bring down Horizon and eliminate their CEO, Anton Lazar. The mission starts as the Syndicate rain hellfire upon the Horizon HQ. We breach the front door and eviscerate the Horizon security stood before me. They send in wave after wave after wave of enemies to try and slow me down. But they all fall to the mighty hand of Moo. We make it up to the executive offices and find Anton having a nap. Wakey wakey sleeping beauty, it's time to f die. Anton's trying to upload his brain to the cloud like a budget Walt Disney. Let's put an end to that bull Oh, you've got your brain in a tank? Oh damn, would you look at that? Helicopter, helicopter! And with that, we've eliminated Anton Lazar, taken down the Horizon Corporation, and completed every mission on Rage Mode difficulty, completing the challenge. <gasps> Unbreakable Will, 0 
Let's go! Come on! But this wasn't just the end of our journey. It was the end of Subject 106's. He's completed his role, and therefore, it's the end of his cycle. And it was here, as I was about to be terminated, that this game finally made sense to me. Like a puzzle falling into place. Every mission I've been sent on, every task I've been given, they weren't to help or protect innocent people. They were to help the Syndicate assist in their corporate greed and cover up their mistakes. And everyone we met along the way, a trail of the Syndicate's failed regime, from a doctor, Subject 95, creating monsters by experimental testing on humans, to a rogue subject, 91, who's turned on the Syndicate to create his own cult, to a philanthropist, Subject 78, whose organisation was made to help those in need. You're burning down the hopes and dreams of thousands of scientists and innovators. Is this the life I wanted to leave behind? These aren't military targets, these are civilians. A life of death and bloodshed? Have you ever noticed how the Syndicate is always the aggressor, always the invader? I wanted to be better. What you're committing today isn't justice, it's genocide. I'm going to be better. We were blessed with these abilities, but we were taken advantage of, but no more. I've always been told that with great power comes great responsibility. I have the power, and it's time to take responsibility. Once we forcefully explain we don't want to be part of this cremation celebration, we get attacked by Banshee team, and thanks to me, they now have something in common with Banshees. They're both dead. We shoot our way through the Syndicate facility until we reach the lab and our next boss, Subject 107. You know the saying, six is afraid of seven because seven ain't nine, but 106 isn't afraid of shit. We pepper 107 with bullets, and section one is over faster than a knife fight in a phone booth. He comes back for more in section 2, but this isn't an all-you-can-eat buffet, buddy. You can't handle more. He cuts off our left hand, but good thing I'm right-handed and have a lot of practice with it. We catch up with Subject 107 at the facility's reactor, and it's time for the last supper. And we're eating tonight. We start by cooking our meat. We want a lovely bit of char on the outside. We then cover him in holes. We want the fats going nice and deep. You can't forget the sides. We're going to cook them up nice and crispy as well. With the sides done, it's time to finish the main dish. The piece de resistance, if you will. We keep a close eye on him, cooking him up, and when you think he's nearly done, add a quick basting of bullets. And just like that, we've taken down the syndicate and broken the cycle. We've got him. Come on. Come on. I think we've done it, chat. I think we've done it. Trepang was definitely a challenge, but it was such a rewarding one. This is, without a doubt, an absolutely amazing game, with brilliant gameplay and an even better story. If you're looking for a game to play, whether you're an achievement hunter or not, I cannot recommend this enough. Thank you so much for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Hope you enjoyed that chat.